Hey guys, J77 here, doing a review of Planet of the Apes. I just saw it a while back. Now I'm doing the review outside the great outdoors on a Sunday afternoon. Beautiful day out. Um, just gonna go right to it. I liked it. I was very, very surprised by this movie. I didn't think it was gonna come in. Um, thinking it's gonna be too good, but it turned out to be surprisingly good. Um. It still has some flaws, but it was very little. Um, it it means very little to the movie. Although um, the ending, um, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, let me just give you a little brief of the of the movie. The movie stars um, um, James Franco. He um, discovered um, he is working on this film to help cure Alzheimer's, which seemed to be the secondary story. It's not really the main story, but it's the story to lead up to what's going, what else is going on in the. Uh, in the um in the movie um he vent the um he has this serum that you know basically can cure Alzheimer's and how they how they they tested it on these um on these apes which um killed um which healed the um parts of the brain um and actually makes them very smart um the company he's working for is not very fond of it um they're not they don't think it's gonna it, it works um but you know james franco who has a who has his father which is played by john lecco who has alzheimer's disease is very very um determined to make sure this works so what he does he takes um this this his ape he takes his ape names him seizure and because the blood because he has the um the serum in his bloodstream already um be begin doing tests on him. Um, they grow a bond, which is very was want to grow a bond. And as they grow, um, and, and as um, that bond, they seem to grow a great friendship. And you are convinced by that friendship because um, leading right up to the end of the film, um, things doesn't go quite as seems. Um, as Caesar grows, um, his his mind grows stronger and stronger. He becomes more aware. Um, he be he basically revolves beyond what um, people expected um, him to revolve, including um, Franco Franco himself. He did not expect <laughs> that to happen. His um, his IQ just doubled, um, and it becomes a, a bit of a problem. Um, he gets into a situation where you know he's now have to be forced to live with other apes, and that's when things started going crazy. Um, he um, realized that. You know, he's not like the other apes. He's smarter than the other apes, and it shows, and it it caused almost a problem. Um, he's treated like trash within the uh, in the in the uh, in the facility days, and and within all that stuff between you know being put in a new environment, um, the apes that he has to live with, and the fact that Draco Malfoy. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm calling Draco Malfoy. You was a douchebag um, in the in the Harry Potter series and you pretty much is an even bigger douchebag now as a zookeeper so yeah it, it pretty much uh, <laughs> fits your description um, because of all that situation things started changing um, things started becoming more obvious that he can't go back to where he was and things start going nuts from there he starts um, gathering these starts gathering all the apes together he starts to um to, t to um to speak to them and in short um he actually breaks out figure out, he's actually small enough to break out of the, um, the facility went back to the house took the serum used it on the apes they become more they become aware of what's going on and to begin uh, and ensue all madness and <laughs> ensues throughout the whole rest of the 20 to 30 minutes of the film okay let me get to the good parts first. There's a lot of good parts in this movie, um, and then I'm gonna get to some of the stuff I did not particularly like about the movie. Let me first say that the the film strictly was carried by the CGI. The CGI is the heart and soul of this movie, and I'm not a big fan of CGI for the simple fact is that too much CGI makes the and lacks the story that it needs to push on. And while the story was um, t was hit or miss in some areas. The one thing that wasn't was pretty much the CGI. The CGI really carried a story, and let's be honest, the, the true the true story, the true character that anyone really cared about, at least I cared about, was the uh, the was the um, seizure, the CGI ape. It, he basically carried this film. I mean, he is the strength of this film. You cared about this um about this this um 
Caesar's character more than anything else in this movie um, to the point where it actually became a hindrance towards the human actors, human um, characters because uh, I'll be honest, I didn't really care too much about the human characters. Um, they were there but they was not really my main concern. I mean, when these characters was in there, I'm like, okay, that's, that's good. I, I'm understanding about your father and all but can we get back to Caesar because a lot of stuff is happening to them. I want to know more about the Caesar. And it's, a good, it's good in one way, it's bad in another way. It really all depends on how you see it but to me, um, to, that was a strong point, and I gotta give credit to the uh, to the effects team for actually convincing me that Seizure, along with the rest of the CGI apes in that movie, were actually real. I mean, they really did a great job. I did not question the CGI, not one bit. And that is a very, very um, that's that's key right there. That's talent. If you can be able to um, convince me without ever trying to question what's going on about the. Um, about the uh, about the CGI and and what's on their surroundings, so kudos to um t to the special effects team. Another thing I want to give um, um credit to is the uh, the people who develop the character. The, um again um making me care for this character was a big key and it worked and it and it worked very well because um the story was actually split. I mean you had the the, the you had the scientist was played by John um, James Franco. Who, uh, who, to his credit, was very good. The character, the actors, were very good, but their story was uh, was least important. But when it was there, it didn't bore me, and, and and that has to do with a lot of pacing. Nothing dragged too much in this film. It, everybody had a certain amount of time. It really worked it well with the um, with the characters, and I felt that because of the because of the pacing it really it really helped this film not hurt this film because if they would have pasted too long on the human characters or even with the CGI um apes it probably would have hurt the film a lot more so the so the pacing along with the final 20 minutes of the film um really really was um done well last and definitely not least i really did not know what was going to happen in this film i really had no clue of how this film is going to end. I was actually on the edge of my seat at the very end of the movie and that's an impressive state because um, it's in some films you can pretty much know how to end. This one you didn't know how to end and that's especially with uh, with uh, like with John Franco and Cedar when they, when they, when they um, meet eye to eye for the last time and, and he's trying to convince them to come home and Cedar who, who um, only spoke a few times in this film. That's another thing I liked about it um, and I'll tell you why. Um, really helped this film because um, he basically told him, look, I can't, I, you know, you're cool, you're good, but I can't go back. I mean, I, I can't go back to that. You know, the, the, the stuff we had is over. This is what's going to happen, and it definitely, um, they left it at that. So I was actually happy, because I thought, honestly, that one of those two characters was going to get killed off in the end of the film. And, um, luckily, and surprisingly, they really didn't. And those are the good parts I liked. The bad part about it goes as follows. I'm going to be very short and simple. A, the title, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, is a little bit misleading, at least by my opinion. This film really wasn't about apocalypse. It was more about um, the up, uh, the um, how they became to be, the beginning of their um, evolution. They really they became something more than what they were, what they known. Um, so that was a little bit of a problem. Um, two, the fact about the um, the, the human characters. Um, not to say that they, they were not bad, but I'm gonna be fairly. I had cared very little about the um, about the human actors. Uh, like I said, um, I was more concerned about the apes, and many people may f may find that you know a little bit off with that. Um, being that the fact it was mostly about the apes and not about the humans. Um, I the most p problem I had was the ending. Um, the ending. <sighs> hmm. How can I put it nicely? Um, the ending was... It, it, let's put it this way. It's a tie-in. They basically left it open for a sequel. That's how I feel. It just did, it didn't feel like it ended. Because really, honest, honestly, it, it didn't end. It's just the beginning. Um, and that was the little... And people may find that a little bit lame, a little bit, you know, you know disappointing. But because I actually liked the film... It didn't bother me too much, but yeah, the ending was not exactly uh, a great ending to that movie. A little bit. Um, um, other than that, I, you know, basically with this, with the exception of lack of, you know, a lack of the uh, the acting, the actors uh, really playing a role. 
Um, I liked the Malta Rockoff story behind that. I think you know, Draco Malfoy did a good job, and you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, and doing you miss put his way when he gets his comeuffins, you you don't feel too feel too sorry for him. But that's good acting on his part too, because he really was a douche. He was very abusive. Um, but besides the ending and the the the, um, the storyline in terms of the human side, not pretty much the CGI side, um, this film was pretty good. I enjoyed it. You know. There will be, you know, hardcore fans that may have may like it or may dislike it for reasons that it didn't feel like the original. That's fine. Um, but if you're a person who's looking to just have a good time and have fun, um, this is a film that's definitely worth your your, your time and energy. So, um, at a scale of one to four, I give it three. Um, three, especially two of those um, stars will be definitely giving for the the, um, the the special effects and the CGI. It was top notch. The first true good CGI, and the pacing. And having me care for a character that doesn't doesn't um, exist, that's where the extra store comes from. Because, I must be honest, um, I actually care for this character, knowing how fake it is. I actually care for this character, and I actually rooted for this character. Um, so, Eddie, that, that's my feeling on this movie. Um, if you guys have seen it, um, let me know what you like or dislike about it. Um, if you uh, think it's... Uh, you, uh, what's your favorite um? Basically this way, what's your favorite um Planet Ace movie? Let me know. I will tell you this. Um, it is definitely better than Tim Burton's movie, and I actually think this was actually a better film than Transformers. So there, there you go. Um, but um, you may think differently. I like to hear from it. Until then, this is Jay signing off.